everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me today. If you like shop your stash, use what you have type videos, I think you're going to love this because um, this kind of theme sort of takes it to the extreme level. I've done this once before and it kind of takes the choice out of shopping your stash a little bit and really forces you to go for things that are probably some of your least used in your collection. So the idea is you're just going to open your drawer and reach to the back for whatever makeup item it is that you need. Or if you've got like bins and stuff up front, dig deep, go for the bottom, and hopefully the things that you end up with are sort of a, uh, wow, I don't even remember the last time I used that. It worked for me because that's the feeling I had going through a lot of this stuff. I feel like when I'm randomly doing my makeup and maybe not doing a video, I will shop my stash and, you know, choose this or that or think, oh, I want to get that thing. But this is a great way to remind yourself of the things that you might not have even had in the back of your mind for a while. So I got my basket here. I did all that yesterday, all the stash shopping, and now we're ready to put it on. So this was the primer that I reached for. I kind of downsized my primer collection recently, but it sort of is creeping back up there. Um, but this is the Too Faced Primed and Peachy Cooling Matte Skin Perfecting Primer. I actually really do like this stuff, and I don't think it was that long ago that I used this. It's just kind of creamy and peach in color, and you do immediately feel a little bit of a cooling sensation as it goes on. Don't you hate when there's little like a tiny bit of dried product comes out of that pump. I really don't like when that happens with skincare and then you're like trying to force it to blend into your skin. Get the forehead covered here. It absorbs pretty fast and just doesn't feel super like dewy on the skin so I kind of see where they're coming from with matte. It's smoothing but it's not dewy at all. The foundation I grabbed is so like off the radar for me. It's the Josie Marin Whipped Argon Oil Beauty Butter. I went back in the back of my bottom foundation drawer. I do have some smallish drawers that I'm keeping foundation in and I've got them kind of separated by like tinted moisturizers and CC creams and like standard foundations and different kinds and this one just happened to be in the back. I have it in medium. It is very whipped. There's peaks. I know I've done a video on this but frankly I'm kind of forgetting what kind of experience I had. So I think I'm gonna dab this around and probably blend it in with my uh, Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush. For my skin tone right now, it's looking a little yellowy and just a little dark. So yay, we'll deal. I like this little brush because I feel like, I don't know, I, I have so much control. I really do get a good blend with it. I feel like it's kind of wanting to set a little faster than I thought it would. Sorry, I don't feel like I could really narrate this process because I was really stressed that everything was going to just stick where it was and become unblendable. Um, it wasn't quite that dramatic, but it did kind of seem to want to cling in a couple areas. Gosh, my skin looks kind of glowy, like it, it does feel hydrated, but it's not like a crazy, super dewy experience. I'm going to also bring in just like a larger blending brush in hopes of getting the most even look possible just because I'm a little concerned this didn't go on super evenly right now. I think we'll need like some concealer and powder to save us but I'm really trying to blend, put in the right effort. Somebody told me on my last video like your foundation isn't blended and listed the several areas where they didn't think it was blended. I'm like sorry for being human. I don't do everything perfect all the time. This is the concealer I pulled out. It's from Flower Beauty and it's called the Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer and I have it in the shade L3-4 Light. It's definitely been a while since I've used this stuff and also the Light Illusion Foundation. I mean as far as I can remember this was kind of a like not a total love but that's okay. I think the tone looks good and I think it's going to brighten us up and we really need that especially with this foundation being just slightly off. But these are the real life issues people run into in their collections right? I applied a little more concealer than I needed there. And in case anyone's wondering what direction this look is going in, I feel like being absolutely glam today. I'm doing lashes. I'm going to do the whole nine yards. Some days you just wake up with a feeling, and that's the feeling I had. I don't think this concealer is really that problematic, but I did apply a bit more than necessary here around the inner part of the eye, and I feel like I'm seeing it a lot on my skin. But I don't really blame the product because I just put on a lot. Sometimes you just put things on your face and you kind of go on autopilot. <laughs> just pop it on. Actually, I feel like I could use a hair more around my nose, though. 
just a little, maybe just a hair right here. I hate that flower beauty has become so much less accessible you know, just in stores. Remember it started in Walmart and now it's gone from my Walmart. I think in its place, that's where they ended up putting the Milani display. So it's like, oh, I do like having Milani in there. Smooth, even, I think kind of brightened up where we needed it from that foundation kind of uh, being a little deep. For powders, I pulled a loose powder and a pressed powder. Um, the loose powder is the Maybelline Master Fix. It's one of those just white like setting powders, and then this Wet n Wild Photo Focus pressed powder in warm light. I think maybe at the, like at the end end of my face stuff, I might go over lightly with this, but I don't think I'm really gonna use it to like set the face. This I think is light enough. Oh, I forgot a lot tends to come off on the brush with this. It's a very soft kind of powder. And I'll just dab this to set my under eye a little bit here. And since I am kind of going, reaching for full coverage glam today, I'm gonna really set my whole face with this. And this powder carries some coverage in it. It's definitely a decent option from Wet n Wild. It has a little bit of a domed, kind of baked look there in the pan. Wet n Wild has come a long way, haven't they? Feeling very matte, very covered there. Here's what we've got for bronzer or contour. Um, this compact from Morphe called Brontour. Celebutante is the shade. I do remember enjoying this when I talked about Morphe a while back. Did a little video on them. We've got kind of this glowy sort of bronzer shade, a contour shade. You can see you kind of easily dipping your brush back and forth. I'm going to just go to the matte side at first here. I remember just getting this off of Ulta's website and I think that video came shortly after Morphe came to Ulta. That was when I really kind of took note and decided okay I'll try some things. Trying to really get up to my white hairline here. Now go for some contour right in here. Trying to remind myself not to take the contour too low. This is a pretty warm shade, it seems like, but it works. I'm not, not mad at that. And then I'm going to continue with these shades and take them down my neck, under the jaw. Make sure we're all covered in the bronzer. I feel like this is one of those products that, you know, Morphe palettes get a lot of talk. The brushes too, but this is one of those kind of like, Hi, I'm, I'm with Morphe 2 kind of products. This is the blush I pulled out. It's from Becca. It's the Luminous Blush in Camellia. It's pink and glowy. It's been a long time, friends. Long, long time. So let's pop this on, see what we got. Okay, maybe I went too light. I got a little scared. There we go. Oh, that's, that's fresh. You know, right there on the apple. Really glowy and nice. Nice and smooth, um, you know, it's got shimmer, but the shimmer really isn't apparent as I look up close at my skin. Oh, this is a formula I really want to get into again. That's a nice, nice rediscovery there. Because I really appreciate and like a glowy blush, I just haven't used this in a while. I got two different formulas of highlight. I got a powder one and a cream one. I know that this Wet n Wild Mega Last is like a good product. I remember enjoying that, but I'm kind of wondering about this shimmer highlighting powder in Pearl Glow from e.l.f. This was in the way, way back, and it looks really light. A lot is picking up on my brush. Let's just see. Is it gonna be chunky? Is it gonna be just pretty? It's intense. Woo. Ooh, it made me literally shiver. This is what I've been doing lately with my highlight, like getting it primarily on this, you know, second cheek, and then if anything's still on, I'll let it glow up my the rest of my face just a little bit, but usually there's just not much there. I've got to be honest, as I look up really close, I, I don't love what I see from that. It wasn't the same effect as with Becca Blush, where I got up close and I thought, wow, everything still looks really good. Like, how am I glowy? Here, <laughs> I'm really seeing it. Maybe if I buff just a little more. And I think some setting spray may help also. Um, I'm not really sure. Th these white, really, really fine translucent powders, what role are these playing in your makeup routine these days? I haven't reached for a powder like this in a while. Whoa, watch out black leggings. I don't know, set everything. <laughs> that got really messy in a hurry. Okay. After putting that setting powder around my nose, I kind of like what happened there, but mm, I don't know if that's really coming back to my daily routine. Um, this was the furthest back makeup setting spray I could find. I don't think I got video of this. It was kind of an afterthought like, oh yeah, I need a setting spray. And this is Urban Decay's Chill. 
gave myself a little more than usual there because I just feel like I've got all kinds of levels of powder on my skin right now. That always feels good. Always feels nice. I'm still obsessed with my coffee cup warmer up here. I use that thing every day. So many of you are like, I got one too, it's changing my life. And it's like an old kind of like 90s type thing. <laughs> it's nothing new, but it's a very modern day need, you know, that we have. I pulled out this little Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Brow Palette and it's got a cream here, like a, a cream you could use to sort of accentuate and really like clean up the brows. It's got a wax and then three powders. And it also comes with a nice little applicator here too, uh, with a spoolie and a, an angled brush. Wow, it's a really sticky wax. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get the wax going in and then I'll apply some powder to even out. Probably these two shades seem the coolest here off toward this side. Bub and I couldn't find anything to watch really last night because it's one of those rare nights where there's no basketball, there's no American Idol, what do I do? Um, and we ended up landing on the show on TLC, My, I think it's called My 600 Pound Life. And this lady was 700 some pounds and I just felt so bad for her and like just getting around and needing so much help to do all the things. But her doctors, man, they knew they knew what she needed to do. The physical therapist, like she got moving more. She took off like well over 200 pounds. And then unfortunately I started falling asleep toward the end, but wow. You could just see all over her face that she was not happy. But as she started to go through and see herself like make these strides, it was like a life returned to her face. You know, she just looked like a different person from that perspective. And that was cool. I'm taking some more wax. And this, like I said, is kind of a thicker, more holding wax than a lot of the ones that are in these little compacts. I'm pretty happy with the way this filled in the other brow. This brush is also super stiff, so I feel like that's making it take just a little longer. Oh, have I told you guys we're planning to go to Destin again in June? I'm so excited. And I guess Belle um, told her preschool class or her teacher or somebody, she's like, we're going to Destin. And the teacher, you know, just making polite conversation, the teacher asked if she could come too. And Belle said, sure, you can come. And at pickup, the teacher was kind of joking with me about it. But walking back to the car, Belle like stops me and looks me in the eye and she's like, my other teacher also is coming. Like she believes that they are truly like, <laughs> gonna hop in the car with us and go. You know, it's just like the funny ways people make conversation, but kids take it to heart. So I think she might be disappointed if the teachers don't come to Destin now. You're free to come, teachers. I did mention American Idol. Gosh, I'm getting in all the info while I do my brows today. Um, American Idol, there has been some incredible talent this season. I have cried, I have laughed. There have been so many good ones. Sorry, I just feel like this brow is overall a little light, so I just keep building this shade. I just don't know how they're gonna whittle it down. They had a lot of, it's hard to tell a little bit because you, you sort of forget who some people are when they move to that Hollywood week, which is the last thing they went through, and they whittle it down to their last bunch that's gonna like sing for their lives in Hawaii, I guess, and then they'll cut that group in half. But I remember going through auditions, they showed a lot of country people, country dudes in particular, and I'm not sure, like several definitely made it through, so we'll see what happens with them. Okay, brows. Spooly. This is just not the quickest method for brows, but it did a good job filling them in. I pulled an eyeshadow primer, and I think I may have pulled this out the last time I shot my stash. Um, it's the Maybelline Master Prime, but it's in like a pearl color. It's a little bit of a shimmery uh, primer, which is okay. It, it still works. It's just not completely like without effect on your lid. You see a little glow. I don't know if you can tell, maybe a little bit. And then I bet you're wondering, how the heck do you pick an eyeshadow palette? You got a bunch of drawers, different eyeshadow palettes in them. What I did was I closed my eyes and I went like this. And I was like, had my camera, I was holding my phone, that's the camera I was using, and pointed it at the drawers back there. And I went like this, and then I just stopped my finger, and then I just went for the one that my finger was pointing at, and then went for the back of that drawer, bottom of whatever stack, and it was this. This pretty vulgar eyeshadow palette, the early bird one. 
So Pretty Vulgar has some nice eyeshadow palettes. It was about a year or so ago I was really into the Phoenix Rising one, like that was a new one out. But this was one of the first ones that came out. And yeah, it's real like everyday kind of tame colors, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it if you are. I'm gonna do a pretty glammed up look with it, I think. These palettes, I need to be giving them more love because there's a really pretty colorful one. Yeah, I need to be doing stuff with it. I'm gonna take this unruffled shade here, which is kind of a cool dusty lilac and I'm just gonna go to the crease with that. That's kind of, you know, one of those not so common shades, but a shade that I really do like to see in palettes. And I'm using my Sigma E25 brush. I'm just really eager to do the eyes today because I'm gonna pop on some lashes. I just wanna go nuts. This shade just works very well at kind of working with my skin tone. Then let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go down here to Unveil this darkest brown in the corner. It looks like it's got maybe a little burgundy working in there. These mattes are blending really nicely one into the next. That's nice to see. Is anybody going to see Dumbo this weekend? I believe it's in theaters this weekend. We really wanted to actually take both the girls. I feel like even Biddy would handle being in a theater just fine. Movies can really grab her attention. She's got a really good attention span, so I think I think she'll handle it. But you know, what's the worst that can happen? You gotta get up and go, I guess. If she's got some popcorn in there to snack on, I think she'll be golden. So there's those two shades. I'll use a little bit of Tweet. It's got a little pinky coolness here. We'll go ahead and highlight. I had some pink on my brush from before, so I really tried to clean that off as best I could, but I really want to see true colors right here. It's like a lavender with a little um, golden shimmer. Kind of put this on the center of the lid. It's pretty. I'm not sure there's a ton of like lavender really coming out of it, but it is such a muted take on that shade. I guess I'm not surprised. And then this shade called Ruffled is super bright. So I'll get some of this going. I feel like I have to sneeze right now, which it would be great to get that out of the way before mascara. It was so nice yesterday afternoon. The weather was perfect. It was sunny, gentle breeze, um, like 65 degrees. We went over to the playground. It was so much fun. And I can see a little bit of the lilac coming through there. I really wanna play up my outer corner here. So we're taking more unveil. I know this is really like kind of my classic eye application style. But honestly, I, I haven't done a lot of really dramatic looks lately, except the Profusion one, which I attempted sort of a halo eye. But like doing the full eye application in my classic style, I feel I haven't done a lot of that. Cause I was into the one shadow stuff so much. So I'm gonna go in with an even smaller brush to help me shape that outer corner. But this is just kind of helping me get it on the lid and wedged into the crease. I think this would be a nice palette for people who like their kind of cool neutrals though. The addition of these couple of dusty lilac shades I think make it really, really beautiful. Then I take like my little Morphe brush and going back right into that same shade and just using this to really pinpoint my crease and kind of let it come out a bit more. Yes, I'm really going for just the come hither eye today. <laughs> Here's a movie throwback for you that I love, Gone with the Wind. We watched that a couple weeks ago. Oh, so good, so dramatic. The evolution of Scarlet and what she has to go through. Like she starts out as a spoiled little all about me girl and then she has to just take on so much. Love Gone with the Wind. I'm dabbing just with my finger a little bit more of the True Colors shade. Just right on there. You know, these are just the little adjustments we make. And then I'm gonna blend just a little more Unruffled kind of right on the outside. Absolutely loving this look. Like dusty lilac, yes. So all about it. I almost wore my dusty lilac uh, sweatshirt today. Mm -hmm. Yummy, thank you. Okay, we haven't even gone to the lower lash line. Whoa, rain will start at 621. Didn't the rain start at exactly 621 in another video where the Weather Channel app interrupted me? Kind of working nicely into, oh, what's that Weather Channel? A brief 
Shower will begin around 618, okay. Weird. Uh, nest egg. Let's go to this little brownish color. I'm just using my E21 smudge brush here. I may bring in that darkest color too. Geez, speeding through town. Don't you love when you hear cars like bumping their base and speeding around and revving their engine like before seven in the morning? And you're like, well, I thought I was awake, but they're really awake. More of a pencil brush effect here now with unveil. Just really let it be smoky. I'm just having a real why am I not using these palettes more moment now. I reached into my bin of liquid liners and I ended up with a black. This is from The Balm. It's called Schwing. It's like a, a long felt tip that gets a little flexible toward the end. So I don't think I've ever used this particular one. Now, years ago I've used Schwing, but um, that was like back when I was in my hot pink room. I love being able to, you know, split up memories of what I've done into those eras of what color was the room. Was it apartment days? Was it hot pink room? Was it my Pepto-Bismol room? We're going for a wing. We have lift off. Have not winged out my liner in so long. This liner did it pretty easily. Just have to go back for a little more at this point. It gets hard sometimes around the crease of your eye. When I go back to do the other eye, give it a fresh shake just so I'm getting like the same kind of product, the same level of saturation on the tip as I did on the first eye. I'm like riding a bike. Sometimes. I tweeted about this yesterday, but I um, had kind of forgotten to do, I, I got off track on my gratitude journaling for a couple weeks. Um, you know, putting my three points that I'm grateful for. Just making a point to do that every day. It really is great to do at the start of your day. Like, just set your mind in the, in the proper place, I feel like, looking for the good. And I'd forgotten to do it, and I got back on it yesterday. So I thought, this is my little reminder, you know, if you've gotten off track on your gratitude journal, like, get back to it. It's just such a great habit to get into. Um, we're going to go to Unveil again, and I'm just going to use this to kind of just finish off my wing from the bottom side. Oh, here's another interesting thing that's happened in our world. Um, you know, we're, we're in Southern Illinois, so we're fans of SIU basketball. And they have a brand new coach. It's Brian Mullins. He is a like beloved former SIU player, total star down here. And he went and coached at Loyola. He was coaching at Loyola last year, assistant coaching when they were in the final four. He's just like this super guy and he was named as SIU's basketball coach last week. And we even went to the little, like they hosted a, a pep rally in town hall and we went to that last Wednesday evening and it was really cool. <laughs> I think he's going to really reinvigorate the spirit in the SIU athletics department. I'm going to curl my lashes and I pulled out a falsies at the bottom of my um, stash of mascaras, which I don't have a ton, but I mean, I have some and this is the Navy Glam. <laughs> so Navy mascara. We'll see how, just how blue it is. Is it going to be undetectable blue? Because I've never used this. Uh, that one looks blue, but coming off just kind of dark on my lashes. But I don't totally dislike the falsies um, brush or formula. I don't know that I'll go ahead and use that on my lower lashes though. I think I'm gonna grab for, I've been trying to use up my Thrive liquid lash extensions on my lower lashes. It's a tubing mascara. It will not smudge down there. And once I use that up, I'm gonna move on to uh, CoverGirl Active on the lower lashes, which has been recommended to me as a non-smudging option because as we discussed in a past video, um, CoverGirl Clump Crusher Waterproof seems to be doing a little smudging lately. Something changed. Used to be old reliable. I can kind of see it now, I think, as the coats are drying, starting to dry. Here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put on my lower lash mascara. I'll pop on my false lashes, and then we'll see what I drew out for lips. Alrighty, here's our eye look. I'm feeling so good about it. I put on Wispies from Ardell. Um, I have my lower lash mascara on also, and I did find myself um, just adding a little bit more of that darkest brown, just smudging it out even further on my lower lash line, just kind of seeing the whole 
whole look come together, I wanted to do that. Now here's what I drew out for lips, completely randomly. I got the CoverGirl Demi Matte Lipstick, which is a great formula um, in the color Trending which is kind of, you know, a little bit of a, a taupey, brown, rosy shade. And then I've got this super dark gloss, number 406, the Artist Plexi Gloss from Makeup Forever. So hit the berry drawer with that one. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop this lipstick on, then we'll see where we wanna go from there. I'm not sure how this found its way all the way to the bottom. Oh yes, I do, it, when I've been looking for dupes and stuff. It makes me completely turn my collection upside down as far as lip products go really kind of enjoying this tone of lipstick with the way this eye look is. And this is so smooth. If you've not tried the Demi Matte CoverGirl formula, it's really great. It's matte finish in the creamiest way possible. But I think we would not be being true to this whole idea if we didn't work in a little bit of this. I'm wondering if just in a light way, ooh, this is dark. just kind of trying to get it lightly on. This is an amazing applicator on the Artist Plexiglasses. It's like a little flat paddle and it's so easy to fit your lip shape. Mm, I'm loving this look. So I could have gone much more full on with this gloss, but I wanted to still see some of that lipstick through, you know, as a base. What are we coming away thinking here? What were the revelations? I think this eyeshadow palette is something I'm going to love. I, I just really enjoy um, kind of the soft neutral idea, but mixing in these dusty lilac tones, I think those are gorgeous. I don't think there's like a ton of versatility in this particular palette because it's kind of like, you know, you got your browns, you got your creams, and then those. But um, the look that it does come together to create, I think, is very flattering. My Argon Beauty Butter Foundation, I think maybe as I get a little more color in my skin, it's going to be a better match and just an easier blend overall. But I'm really happy to have used that again. I think the Flower Concealer actually did great for me. Looking up close at the under eye, it might be just a little heavy looking, but not terrible. And are you loving this little like and it was kind of necessary to have this sort of good coverage brightening concealer on the under eye. Things that were all like kind of good for me but not out of this world would be like um, the Makeup Forever Brow Kit, uh, that primer from Maybelline, you know, it's just okay. The Schwing Eyeliner, there are a lot of great black liquid liners. I love my Revolution one that's in the pin style. I think that's so easy to use. And the staying power of the Milani 16 hour liquid is just awesome. The Navy Mask mascara, you know, it is what it is. I, it, you can hardly tell that it's navy. The e.l.f. highlight, good, but not the most like undetectable, really sneaky highlight. The Brontour from Morphe, it did the job. I think it contoured me well. I can't really complain about it. And the Photo Focus Powder from Wet n Wild was pretty good. This primer is something I'm gonna try to reach for more. I thought that did well. Um, the Chill Setting Spray is good, I like that. But I think some of my favorite takeaways would be the eyeshadow palette, the blush, the Becca blush, in that um, luminous blush formula, so nice. And I do really like these lip products. It's the lipstick in Trending from CoverGirl. That looked really pretty on its own, but who can argue with a little berry gloss on it? Now shall we, shall we take this down just to see what I'm really gonna look like today? <laughs> As you can see, we definitely had no rollers in the hair today, so we're just kind of going with the straight and sleek look, but I'm so happy with how this turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this inspires you to look to what you have and see just how happy you can be with some of the products you might already have in your own collection. You've just been forgetting about them. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.